All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer Four Four. So today, guys, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll be discussing about the weekend games, guys. The weekend games. We have some really good weekend games, guys, and it's only right we start with this one. For me, possibly the best game this weekend, and that is the Dirk Classicer. I am super pumped for this game, guys. This is going to be a game that will mean so much, and I will definitely try to watch this game. Definitely try to watch this game because this. Is gonna be massive, absolutely massive. Okay, so let's go ahead and look into the insights coming into this one. This is the 133rd time since the Bundesliga was founded that Borussia Dortmund faces FC Bayern. No other fixture has been played as often in German professional football. Bayern conceded 32 defeats against Borussia Dortmund, more than any against any other team all competition. Dortmund, on the other hand, lost 65 times against Bayern Munich, also more than they have against any other side. After eight consecutive defeats in competitive matches, Borussia Dortmund managed to win a point in the 2-2 draw against FC Bayern Munich in the reverse fixture. However, BBB have lost their last eight uh, Bundesliga matches away from all at Bayern in their BL history. Dortmund only had on, on, had only only had one longer uh, losing streak away from home at Werder Bremen from 1979 to 1989. And this Bundesliga match between Borussia Dortmund and FC Bayern for the third time this Bundesliga season, a league leader will play the team in second place. The respective league leader has only lost one of the third last 13 Bundesliga matches against a second place side, December 2020. Bayer Leverkusen won, um, Bayer Leverkusen 2 won against FC Bayern. FC Bayern Munich have won only only five of the last 10 Bundesliga games in 2023, and with 52 points after 25 games, they are playing the weakest B BL season um, in 11 years. In 2011 2012, they had 51 points in the stage of the season, which was the last time that Munich were not the German champions, Borussia Dortmund were. For the first time since the second match day in 1920, Borussia Dortmund has topped the Bundesliga table. The last time this was the case in the second half of the season was match day 27, 18, 19, when the team suffered a 5 0 defeat away at FC Bayern. The stadium is, of course, at Allianz Arena. So, coming into this game, man, there is a lot of narratives for this game. A lot of narratives for this game. First of all, you have the Tuchel narrative. The Tuchel narrative, man. Tuchel playing against his former club, Borussia Dortmund. He's got to have a statement to prove. And this is his first game in charge, you know. As well as the fact that Bayern are also in a huge crunch period of time. Because in a few weeks' time, they'll be playing against Manchester City in the Champions League. So there's a lot on the line for Thomas Tuchel here. And, of course, Juro Nagelsmann got sacked. Now, my key for the key for Bayern for this game is how are they going to do attacking-wise. Because I think defensively speaking, I think they're very solid. I think they've been great. Uba McConnell and Delight have formed an excellent partnership at the back. And my only concern with Bayern is where the goal is going to come from. Because that's really my concern this season. Because Gnabry has been really out of form this season. And Sané, is, he had a good first half of the season, I'll say this. But I think the second half, he's been really, really dipping in form. And for Borussia Dortmund, man, they have a lot of injuries to contest with. I believe at the time of recording this video, um, they are going to be without Adiemi, who is a big blow. Now, I'm not sure if Adiemi will play in time for the game. He may miss the game. Mori is out. Durenville is out. Brandt is out, and I know for certain that Jamie Br Bion Gittens and Kamara is out for this game. So, um, there is a potential possibly Brandt, Durenville, Eddie Yemi, Mori could play, although I don't really think they will. And obviously for Bayern, Neuer is out for this game. Lucas Hernandez is out, and obviously Mus Musiello. So, some big injuries there. And of course, the head-to-head -head record. Bayern got 24 wins, draw four draws for uh, four draws, and 13 wins for Brazil. And the last time Borussia Dortmund actually won this fixture, guys, was back in um, 2019, which was the DFL Super Cup. So it's been a while since Dortmund have won the Der Klassiker. And this is a huge one for Bayern Munich, man. Huge, huge one. My score prediction for this one, guys. My score prediction. I am going to go with Bayern to win. I just feel like for me, for Dortmund, I just feel like they're going to fall short. I think they're going to fall short. I hope that they can at least get a draw to make things interesting. But realistically speaking, it's Byron's title to lose. It's Byron's title to lose. And I expect Byron to bounce back here with a crucial win. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win at home. I think they're going to actually come from behind with this game, believe it or not. And I think Byron will just have that finishing quality to see off the game. And I look at the players like Sadio Mane. Then I look at Thomas Muller. And for Dortmund, I'll probably just say... Um, I'll probably just say um, Brandt. Actually, Brandt's injured. Um... Maybe we'll say Sebastian Haller. Why not? Why the heck not? Why the heck not? Sebastian Haller. 
All right, let's move on to the next game. The next game we have here is PSG versus Leon. Now, I'll be honest with you guys and just say this right now. I Well, technically, we're supposed to preview this, but we all know which team is winning. We all know which team is winning. I don't even really want to spend too much time looking at the uh, uh, insights for this one. I mean, we'll do it quickly, I guess, but really, on all it's it's pretty obvious. It's, it's, it's pretty obvious to see what is going to happen, but we're just going to go ahead and do it for formality reasons. Let's just look at this anyway. So, uh, let's look at this. So, PSG... Uh, Paris have won 10 of the last 15 League 1 matches against Lyon, scoring 32 goals in those 15 matches, averaging 2.1 goals per match. P Paris have just lost one of their last 14 home games against Lyon in League 1. That was on this third, 13th of December 2020. Paris have lost four of the last 12 League 1 matches in 2023, already more than whole 2022. Lyon have just lost only one of their last nine League 1 matches. That was on February 17th at Uxer. However, Olympic Lyon have drawn each of the last three games. Beaten by Rennes the last home game. Uh, Paris have now suffered two consecutive home defeats on home soil in League One since February, April 2021. So this game, of course, the Parc de Prince. Now, I think the interesting thing for PSG here is how are they going to approach this game? Are they going to like be like arrogant? Because we saw in the last game against Rennes that they got beaten comfortably at home, which is kind of sad. And obviously, Rennes did the double. So PSG have some injuries to contest with. Obviously, Ramos is out. Kim Bempre is out. Mukieli is out. Neymar's out for the season. Marquinhos is out. Soler is out. Hakimi is out. As for Leon, Malagosto is out, and Anthony Lopez. That being said, though, you, if PSG still have the likes of Messi and Mbappe, and you would expect them to run riot in this kind of game, and especially this being a huge one, I, I think PSG should be winning this, honestly. The, the, there's 23 wins for PSG, 5 draws and 6 wins. So I'm going to go with PSG to win this one. I'll say they win this 2-0. I think Messi and Mbappe will both score the goals. And for Leon, man, look out for Lacazette, though. Lacazette's been in really hot form this season, 17 goals. So he could maybe give Leon a little chance here and there, but I don't think it'll be enough. I don't think it'll be enough. Okay, next up, it is Napoli versus Milan. This is amazing. I'm definitely going to try to watch this game because um, this game will obviously have huge ramifications for what happens in the Champions League, of course, because the two teams will obviously play against you in the Champions League. So we're going to go ahead and discuss the this league fixture, though, this weekend. So let's go look at this. So Napoli versus Milan. So let's go look at the insights coming into this game. So, um, for this one, guys, this will be the match number 153 out between Napoli, AC Milan. The Rosanari have only won two of the last 16 league matches against the Azzurri, but they've, but they've won, la uh, won two of the last five. AC Milan have won both of the last two away games against Napoli in the Serie A, while only, while only once have they achieved three consecutive wins in the Azzurri's home in the top flight between 1948 and 1951. Napoli, AC Milan, who will also face each other in the Champions League quarterfinals, will meet at at least four times the same year for the first time since 1989-90. In that case, Azzurri won their first league match and then recorded one draw and two defeats to others, three in Serie A Coppa Italia. This will be the only second time in Serie A history where Napoli will face AC Milan more, with more than 15 points between them. The other occasion came back on the April of 15, 2018 with Azzurri 35, 25 points ahead of the Rosanari before the match. A Napoli are without a draw for longer than any other current Serie A side. 23 games in a row without drawing. Only Bokim has collected fewer draws than Azuri in the big five European leagues in 2020-2023. The stadium, of course, is Diego Armando Maradona. For this game, guys, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how Napoli approaches one because obviously they're in hot, stellar form. You know, you look at the players like Kivicia, Kovatskalia, Osimhen, who's been in fire, Lobotka has been amazing, Kim Min Jae. Napoli this season just look fantastic. Milan, on the other hand, they are kind of peaking the right time. I do think they have improved. But my concern with Nat Milan is that they've had two really disappointing, two disappointing results. I think they lost to uh, Udinese, and then I think they lost to Fiorentina. So they need to pick up some points because the Serie A table is looking a bit rough for Milan. I believe Milan, at the time of recording this video, they're currently fourth right now, but just about by one point ahead by Roma. So it's a really, really tough for um, uh, Milan here. They really need to get something from this game, and even a draw will be good enough for them. As for Napoli, of course, they're going to keep try to continue their winning streak they have established because there's 71 points and it's just gonna be a matter of time before they win the scudetto so for this one guys i'm gonna go napoli to win i just think napoli from here just way too good at the moment i don't see milan doing any maybe milan can sneak a draw i could the best i could see milan is getting a draw i don't see napoli in milan winning this even though their recent history has suggested that i just feel like for me napoli have just been way too good this season and i'm gonna go with napoli to win i'll say i'll say one nil i think this will be a much closer affair than it was in the first fixture but I do think Napoli will get the job done. And I am going to go with Awesome to score the game-winning goal to give Napoli all three points. And finally, the penultimate fixture we have here, guys, 
it is Man City versus Liverpool. So, let's go ahead and discuss about this, guys. Um, let's just do a quick preview for this one. Um, so, Man City versus Liverpool. Okay, so Man City versus Liverpool. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. So, Man City, um, the uh, insights coming into the Manchester they've just lost one of their last 13 Premier League home games against Liverpool, going down 4-1 November 2015 under Manuel Pellegrini. Liverpool looking to complete the league double over Manchester City for what would be just second time in the last 17 seasons, previously doing so in Jurgen Klopp's debut campaign at 15 and 16. Liverpool have won more Premier League games, more Premier League games against reigning champions than any other side. They're looking to achieve their first such double since 13 and 14 between Manchester United, 1 0 at home, and 3 0 away under Brendan Rodgers. Manchester City have won the last three Premier League games, but they have yet to win four in a row in 2023. They last did so in April slash May last season and run a five. Liverpool have just taken 12 points from the last 13 Premier League away games this season, compared to 30 at home. They have the biggest difference between points when one at home and on the road in the Premier League this season, 18. So coming into this game, guys, I'm just really worried um, for how Liverpool's going to be like because Liverpool, man, it's looking so bad. This season, they've been shambolic, absolutely dreadful, especially on the road. And I just feel like for me, for Manchester Liverpool in particular, they're just looking so bad. They have so many injuries as well. Diogo Alcantara is going to be out for the game. Bajacite is going to be out. Luis Diaz is doubtful for this game. Samikas is doubtful. Henderson is doubtful. Dar Nunez is doubtful. Calvin Ramsey. And for Man City, the only real injuries they have is Phil Foden and Erling Haaland. Now, the Holland injury could be serious, but you have Julian Alvarez that can be there as a good backup. And we know how good he's been as a backup this season. So... It's going to be very diff interesting to see what happens for this one, guys. But I think Man City should be winning this. I just don't really see Liverpool doing it in this game, especially this being on the road. And I feel like Manchester City being so energized and so motivated. And I feel like this is a huge one for Manchester City because, obviously, they're trying to, you know, um, do three in a row in the EPL, and they need to win this game. So I'm going to go with Manchester City to narrowly win this one. I don't think it's going to be a blowout, per se, but I do think they'll win this. So I'm going to go with a 2 on win for Manchester City. And, yeah. A 2-1 win. So, I will say the goal score is going to be... I say Julian Alvarez will get a goal. And I think I'm going to go with uh, KDB. I think KDB will score. And I have a feeling for Liverpool, it will be Salah. Salah just always loves to score. Against Man City. And now, finally, the last game we have here, guys. Quite possibly the most interesting one. And it is Villarreal versus Real Sociedad. So let's go ahead and look into the preview um, insights coming in for this game because it's very, very interesting to see how it all um, transpires, of course. So, Villarreal, um, let's talk about them, man. Let's talk about them. So, Villarreal... Um, Villarreal have lost their last two late, last two games against Real Sociedad La Liga and could lose three in a row against the San Sebastian side for the first time in the top flight. Wow. Following their 1-0 win, the Real Arena in October 2003, Real Sociedad could do the league double for Villarreal for the first time since in La Liga. Real Sociedad avoided defeat in the last four away matches against Villarreal, also due to the same victories in the, as in their previous 15 away matches against the old side in the competition. Villarreal have taken 10 points for the last 12 on offer in La Liga, having lost each of their previous four games in the competition before this run. Real Sociedad have drawn through the last five La, La Liga games in La Liga, as many draws as they had in the previous 25 matches of the competition. The stadium, of course, is El Madrigo. Now, for me, the thing with this squad, guys, is that Villarreal this season have been so hot and cold. Like, I I think um, Setien is really struggling to get the best out of this Villarreal team. And it's just really disappointing to see how Villarreal is just such a weird team. Like, it feels like at times they should be winning games that they should, but then when it comes times to games that they... Shouldn't it be losing? They actually lose, you know. And I think the injuries to Gerard Morano is a huge, huge worry for them. Francis Coquelin as well. And Etienne Copoye. For Real Sociedad, Omar Sadiq is out. Martin Mekrones is out. And Artus Astado is out. And I feel like for me, the problem with Real Sociedad, they just cannot score. They're just, their inability to score is really haunting them. And this is a huge game for top four guys because Real Sociedad is just 48 points with 26 games. And Villarreal is 41 points. So, Real Sociedad, man, they just cannot seem to score goals at the moment. And this is a huge, huge one. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how this one pan, uh, transpires. But I am going to go for a nil-nil draw. I just feel like, for me, both these teams are just lacking their firepower in the attack. And I feel like, for me, both teams don't really have an, uh, don't really have a solution in their attack. So, I'm going to go for a nil-nil draw. 
let's see what happens uh, and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your predictions comment section below for these five games uh, and also if you made it this far please let me know in the comments as well like subscribe if you did enjoy subscribe if you're new around here comment up with your thoughts comment section below make sure you guys also check out my month plus description below and also consider becoming a member of the channel to support me to get access to members videos and hopefully member streams in the future so we currently as of today guys we have two members on the channel so hopefully we can get eight members in the future so hope you guys do enjoy and i'll see you guys later peace out